Have you ever had the experience of reading a book that has dramatically changed your life? We had that experience with Cory Ten Boom's The Hiding Place and we had the amazing, amazing experience to actually visit her house and crawl through the hiding place and we want to bring you with us today. Try it. Come on down. No. Yeah, Try yeah. it. No, no. Just I'm... do it. It's really fun. Come on down. Yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone. Welcome to Learning Brave. I'm Skylar. And I am Ross. Today we want to bring you with us to one of the most amazing places in the world for a World War II learning experience. Before we went to um, Harlem in the Netherlands, I remember speaking to Skylar and saying, hey, um, I really want to go to some really um, sort of hands-on and, you know, authentic experiences to experience World War II, but I know that you had some reservations for some of them. We wanted our kids to learn as much as they could on our journey and particularly about World War II because we were going to Europe and growing up in high school and university I feel like I spent tons of time on this topic. Yeah. It's an important topic so we read all sorts of literature and we wrote all sorts of essays and we covered it a lot and one of the books that I read as a teenager, it wasn't part of school but I read it as an extra thing was Corrie Ten Boom's The Hiding Place. Absolutely. And so we really wanted to allow our children to have an experience that they would not forget. An experience about World War II that wasn't just horror. Yes, and that's what I meant. Yeah. I, I remember us having a discussion about how will we introduce our kids to World War II and I know there were lots of horrific things we could have taken them to and instead we chose to read the book, discuss the concepts there and introduce them to I guess World War II from a not so gruesome perspective. Yeah, I mean, our kids were pretty young now. We have older teenagers. We probably do a very different experience. Yeah, yeah we probably tackle it differently. But yeah. back then, our oldest was 11 turning 12, and our youngest was a baby. So our kids were young. But it's such an important topic, and we were right there. So we wanted a hands on experience. We didn't actually take them to a concentration camp. We were advised from a lot of groups on the internet that we. You know, we asked everyone, other travellers and stuff, and they were like, mm, your kids maybe, should be at least 12 or maybe 14. Maybe wait yeah. till they're a bit older. But one of the best ways to tackle World War II learning, where you get the real, the real bits of how terrible it was, and you also get some hope, is from The Hiding Place by Cory Ten Boom. And I remember reading this. Did you read this as a teenager? I never did. I, re I began reading it myself when we arrived in Europe and then began reading it as a family, but I'd never read it previous to that. I did. I read it as a teenager and I, I'll never forget. It changed, it changed me. It was just very profound. Like the characters, like they're real people and the way that they handled such terrible challenges with so much faith and goodness. It was was a beautiful thing to learn about. Yeah, and I think for me, as I read it, I, I think it was a good example of showing what a hero actually is. So too often yeah. we glorify great feats of strength and, you know, heroism yeah. and, yeah. and in war. Yeah, really into superheroes. Yeah, and you know, in war we <laughs> talk about those great people who went and did heroic things, you know, but little do we talk about the ordinary everyday people that actually did ridiculous amounts of bravery like seriously this book shows an immense amount of bravery and as you said Skylar gives great hope for humanity I think as yeah. a result of it. Corrie Ten Boom and her sister Betsy are definitely two of my heroes yeah. and just to be able to share that with my children like we it was a dream come true and so today we want to kind of show you what it's like there and show you some photos and talk about it and maybe you can dream about a place that you would like to share with your family one day. And that really, if you remember back to some of our earlier YouTube um, videos, we shared that that was one of the things that we wanted to do for our children in leaving our home country and traveling the world and experiencing life was to allow them to have authentic real life experience and this was probably one of the greatest ones that we've done. Going into it, I was a bit like, 
oh, what if it's not as good as I'm hoping it will be? And I was also worried about like, what if my baby cries the whole time and ruins the experience? Because that had happened lots of times. Yes. <clears throat> and it will share lots of different <laughs> ones about that. And so, because it meant a lot to me and I was like, really hoping it would turn out well. And it did. Corrie Ten Moon's house is above a clock shop. Which is now a jeweler. Same name. It was actually closed on the day that we were there. We were just on an unlucky day of the week. But the business is open and I... It was really cool to see. It was. <laughs> so we, we all went as a family. I mean, I thought about leaving the baby behind to try to find a babysitter. But it's just it was just such a special thing. I wanted to bring all our family. So yeah. we did. And so then, we, I know to get into the Curry Ten Boom house, you have to pre-book um, some, you know, the tour. And so we done we did that and as we started the tour we began in this room a very small room the tours are very small and very intimate so i think there was only probably 15 people maximum and so we started in this room that looked like it hadn't been changed from world war ii it, it was, that's because it hadn't it was just yeah the no, same. they preserved it all so all the original furnishings all the pictures on the wall it's all just like frozen in time it's amazing wow. so we yeah we walk in and we start the tour off and the tour the tour started a bit interestingly because uh, i think the the curry Tempium house is owned by a christian organization i can't remember which one it is but they use it i guess as a way to um sort of teach the gospel preach. a little bit preach a little bit there was a little bit a little bit of preaching at the beginning but that's okay we didn't mind that yes the tour began with a heavily accented and rather pointed preaching session about christianity and, and support of the jews and yeah not quite sure because i couldn't exactly understand about half of what she was <laughs> what the lovely Dutch lady you're talking She was about. lovely. Well, that, room, that was probably the hardest part of the tour was keeping the kids quiet for about, what, 30 minutes maybe? Maybe not, 20 minutes yeah. as she talked through some things. For me though, you know, as an adult and probably as an older teenager, we would appreciate some of the things she talked about. She talked about the history of, of the Jewish people and what happened to them during World War II. There was a good history lesson. So I enjoyed it, but it was a bit hard with some of the younger kids. After that portion of the tour, we got to um, be led around the house and our tour guide, she was lovely and she took us around and pointed things out and we were the only ones with younger kids and she was so lovely, like cause we were often last and she allowed time for us to take photos and oh my goodness, my kids and my family, we got to crawl through the hiding place and stand in the wall cavity and I just... It was amazing, like to actually be standing in a place that I'd read about and learnt about and that had affected me in my young life and then to be there with my family was like, it was, it was amazing. Okay, you will oh, take a picture of her. Oh, yeah. oh yes, just a moment. She was a very lovely guide. She put up with millions and millions of questions <laughs> from our children. Um, often dumb questions, but she answered them all and she gave a great you know, description of everything. She took us under the, also showed us the place under the stairs. There was, she showed us this triangle type clock that would be what was put into the window to alert everybody that things were safe. So that's still there. It's pretty amazing. We also got to see like they had an alarm system. And so they described the alarm system and how much time the Corrie's family and the hiding Jews had to hide. And that they used to like, they'd, they had to make it look like there were only a certain amount of people living there, if even there was, though more yeah. than people, more than that ate dinner. Like, so they, so they had these special ways that they would hide dishes and that they would yeah. Like hide all the evidence that there were extra people living in the house. Yep. It was pretty amazing what they could actually achieve. The amount of Jews that they were able to hide and then um, transport into different parts of the country to escape the Nazi Germans it was, it was, it was amazing. It was amazing that a pair of, you know, 50 plus year old women 
and their elderly father could actually be a huge part of the Dutch resistance. Yeah. I mean, that to me is mind-boggling. It just proves that no matter what age you are, whatever's gone on in life, that you can actually make huge impacts in the world. And these guys made a massive impact. And we wanted to show our kids this. Like, yeah. this is like dream come true type stuff. Yeah. This is like... This is what real, real heroes are made of. Yes, and we wanted to pull them out of the books in the classroom and, and they stood there and touched it and heard stories and it was just transformational. It was. It was transformational. In the Ten Boom house is also a special tapestry that Corrie used to display when she read out. Like after, after World War II, she went around and did a lot of talks and helped a lot of people with her story. And she used to always share a poem about how God God weaves our life into a tapestry and that the dark threads are as important as the light threads. It's a beautiful poem. It's in my blog if you'd like to read it. And um, the, it's a tapestry of a crown that she did and she, she'd show people and that's in the house. And it was just, it was amazing to be there and be part of it. And no, we weren't part of it, but to no. see, like to learn about World War II with our family in person. Well, I mean, it comes back to the fact that when you have an experience with something, you remember it. Yeah. Um, for me, you can you can often get that from reading a book, but for me, I get that when I'm there and I'm seeing it and I'm imagining that I'm there at the time. For us, visiting Curry Tim Boom's house and seeing the hiding place was a dream come true. We only get one life and we may as well try and make dreams come true. We would like to know what are some of your dreams? What are some places that you would love to go with your family to be there and to touch it and feel it and experience it? We would love to hear from you. So please let us know in the comments. Okay. Thanks for joining us again Thank today, you. guys. We'll you see rock. you next time for some more stories, tips and tricks. Bye. Bye. We're going to film YouTube. Come on, baby. Party, do something. I am. I'm. You're leading no, no, the way. No, no, don't do anything. You're just sitting there. It's your freaking YouTube it's channel. It's your channel too. <laughs>